This is a steel tongue drum, and even though I've got no musical talent or knowledge, I still love inventions that find interesting ways to play music. So how do we go from this lovely sounding rubber mallet thingy, which sounds beautiful even with random tapping, to a Lego machine made of plastic and metal and wire? Well, to start with, we can try tapping with these little rubber nipple jobbies. Stick a couple of these in a Lego lift arm, and now we can upgrade from a horribly tinny plastic noise to something that sounds a little closer to the rubber mallet. But why am I still tapping this drum with my hands like a sucker? Let's get building. My first thought was to create a Lego mallet that can tap the drum automatically. Using this rubber band, we can create a tapping motion that snaps back into place. Then if we add a rotating arm to pull it back, it'll activate the mallet twice with each full rotation. And of course we can vary the sound by changing the tension on the rubber and the frequency of rotations. When we add our Lego mallet to it, this should mimic a mallet tapping on the drum. Let's see if it works. Huh, <laughs> nice. When we rotate the little gear, it makes a nice little ding. I quite like the noise it makes already. So the next question is, can we control this with a motor? Haha, <laughs> nice, we sure can. It does sound a bit robotic and stilted though. The other downside is that the noise from the motor is quite intense and drowns out the lovely notes a bit. It doesn't sound bad though, just a bit unnatural. Which makes me wonder, what if we embrace the unnaturalness of it and upgrade to one of these ridiculous buggy motors? I think these things run at over 2000 RPM. I'm sure this is going to sound delicate and beautiful. Oh well, that was exactly as violent as I expected. Okay, so this is not useful, but in a weird way, it does also sound kinda nice. I'm gonna check out this idea for now, but I feel like there's still maybe a future use for it. Okay, well, if we're gonna check out the motors idea, my next idea was to see if we can make a keyboard that can directly actuate the mallet. How we make eight of them is future James's problem. So with this mechanism, if we pull on the triangular jobby, we can activate the mallet. And then if we make a key with a little lever on it, and stick it over here, when we press it, it activates the mallet, and then it can reset itself straight after. If we add another rubber band to reset the key, now we can press it over and over, and hopefully this will allow us to play notes using a keyboard of sorts. Does it work? Mmm, sort of. The keystroke distance is massive and wonky. And when I take my hand off the key, the mallet resets and mutes the lovely ring of the note. Unfortunately, I think this takes away some of the magic of the drum's beautiful notes. And this also feels like it takes a lot of energy to play anything. So I have another idea which I think might solve most of these problems. A solenoid. If we use the same principle as I used in my coil gun where we send a pulse of current through a coil of wire, we can pull an iron nail into it. Or a knife, I guess. But let's start with a nice nail. If we feed this nail into a coil of wire sandwiched between these two Lego plates, and then chuck some current into it, it pulls the nail into the middle of it. And we really just need a little tap here. If we then wrap some elastic bands onto a lift arm, we can pull the nail back into place. So let's see if this general idea works. We'll set the nail between the elastic bands, and with our LiPo battery, it's looking cautiously optimistic. The travel distance isn't much, only about a centimeter, but that's really all we need. So what does it sound like? Ugh, pretty metallic. But what if we take a bit of this pneumatic hosing and snip off a wee bit, and then stick that onto the end of the nail? Mmm, yeah, this is pretty useless, <laughs> and a pretty horrible solenoid design. Okay, let's try a different solenoid design. If we pop one of these countersunk magnets onto an axle, and then stick a coil onto this plate, now we can slide the axle through the plate, putting the magnet into contact with the coil. And we'll use elastic once again to return the solenoid arm to its retracted position. Now, approaching these design challenges requires thinking about the problem freely and from all angles. And when it comes to trusted information, Ground News lets you do the same. And it was developed by a former NASA engineer, Harleen Kaur. Ground News collects coverage from over 40,000 outlets and rates each source on political bias, factuality, and ownership. 
which helps you understand if you've been absorbing sensationalized information in an echo chamber, which I know I'm guilty of occasionally. For example, LEGO made headlines recently with their plans to open a new zero emissions factory in Vietnam, and we can see 89 sources reporting on this with 33% of those leaning left and 13% leaning right, with easy visual cues to understand the distribution and which sources are reporting on the topic. And this handy factuality score indicates how much confidence we can have in these sources. But for me, their blind spot feed is a crucial feature that reveals stories that your algorithm might be hiding from you because of the topics that you tend to interact with most. So this helps you gain a greater perspective. So scan this QR code on screen or go to ground.news forward slash Jamie to subscribe and get 40% off the Vantage plan for unlimited access to both the website and app. This is our ticket to balanced, comprehensive news supported by us, the subscribers, with a nice, clean, ad-free interface. A big thanks to Ground News for partnering with me on this video. You can subscribe using my link below. Alright, so can we get this little Lego solenoid to actually play some music? Well, sort of. It's very quiet. But putting the drum on its side gave me an idea. On its side, it still sounds good. But more interestingly, upside down, it also sounds good. So this makes me wonder if there's maybe a much simpler solution to all of this. What if we can suspend the drum upside down and then tap on it by having solenoid arms fire upwards? Then gravity can simply reset the solenoids and it makes it much easier to position a bunch of solenoids to hit each note on the drum. I suspect this will also allow the musical notes to ring out for a while without being dampened if you happen to hold down the key. With our cross-shaped bass in place, we can pop on some of these arms to suspend the drum upside down. And some of these rubber nipple thingies again can provide some grip and allow the drum to ring nicely. Okay, fingers crossed, let's see how she sounds. Hmm, <laughs> wow, I'm actually stunned by how good this sounds. I was concerned the rubber pads might dampen the sound a little, but this sounds great. Well, then comes the interesting part, the solenoids. And if we build half a large octagon like this, and build a base to support the full octagon. Like yo. And yo. Then we can chuck these two halves together, giving us eight holes for our solenoids. Hopefully then, if I can get Oops. the positioning just right, each one will be able to tap onto one of the eight notes of the drum. Now let's see if the positioning is largely correct. Huh, damn, that's awesome. This positioning worked perfect on the first attempt. That's rare. Well, hey, I'll take it. Well, in that case, now we just need to take our base and pop the octagon onto it. Very nice. We'll probably need to support the drum better, but this is a good start. For our solenoids then, we can simply pop a couple of gears onto an axle, secure one end of the wire over here, and then just wind a couple of hundred turns of copper wire onto it, leaving us with this lovely tight solenoid coil. To make sure our idea for the solenoid actually works, let's give it a quick test by popping the coil into this little jobby. Then if we take an iron nail and give it a little rubber head, we can drop the nail into it, and with a 9 volt battery when we connect it, the nail jumps up into the coil. This looks perfectly powerful and responds nice and quick. I'm pretty sure with this we can tap the keyboard as quickly as we like and get an immediate response on the drum. So let's see if we can get a nice noise from this drum. I haven't fortified the suspension arms just yet. Whoops. But even at this stage, this sounds perfectly good for what hey. we need. The notes sound relatively clean, and the solenoid responds immediately with a lovely ringing. Ugh. Okay, well, now that we know we can ring the drum nicely, we clearly need a keyboard to play it. We'll start by fashioning a key out of these lift arms, and an elastic band will once again provide tension to reset the key after it's pressed. Now we can tap away, and the key will press, and then reset back to a much more normal position compared to my first attempt. The other end of the key will be where we make contact with the solenoid, and to do this, we'll wrap a little bit of copper wire around the end of the key, and then this strip of conductive nickel will make contact with that wire, and is held nicely in place by our elastic bands. Then, running through the top of the key scaffold is another wire, which will be able to close the circuit when touched by the nickel. Let's give this idea a quick whirl to see if it works. Hey, awesome! Running off just a single 9 volt battery, this flings the nail at just the right speed, and it responds immediately. Though, before we get too excited, let's see if it's also able to ring the drum from the distance it'll sit from the solenoid octagon. 
Hey, this is perfect. And just like my coil gun, if we want to increase the volume, all we have to do is increase the voltage and current to speed up the nail. Cool, well, now we know this concept works, we're gonna need a bunch more of these little dudes. We have eight notes, so we'll need eight of these keys. And eight of these little nickel pads. By the way, if you like experiments like these with LEGO and technology, feel free to subscribe or drop a like. And if you'd like to see more behind the scenes of how I make these things, my Patreon is linked below. Alright, with the keyboard nicely secured, we'll need to add our solenoid coils to our octagon. Our coils are exactly one lift arm thick, so they'll fit perfectly sandwiched between these arms of the octagon. Uh, I'm not looking forward to sorting out this bird's nest of wires, though. Good lord, what a mess. Okay, with that sorted, we have eight notes ready to play. We'll fortify the drum holder, and connect one end of all the solenoids together. Then the other ends of the solenoid will contact the keyboard keys from C. Now, unfortunately, we don't have an F. Up the octave to the next C. Now, I know I could make this neater by soldering the contacts, but just in case I want to move the notes around, I'm going to use some handy little pinchable contacts. Each of these then will connect to the keys over here. And this time, the keyboard is in the correct orientation compared to my last musical abomination, where the keyboard played lower notes from left to right. I know that ticked off a lot of you. You can clearly tell how much I know about music and instruments. With our keyboard hooked up to the solenoids, we'll take eight of these nails with pneumatic hosing bumpers on them and pop one into each of the coils. Then if we pass one long copper wire without enamel through the top of the keyboard and secure it with another piece of pneumatic hosing, let's now give it a quick try using a couple of 9 volt batteries. One end goes to the solenoids and the other to the keyboard. And now, if we press each note, we get these lovely dancing little nails. I really love how responsive they are, and the bumpers on each nail also help to dampen the noise as each one falls back into place. Alright, let's give this a quick test. It's still a little quiet though, so let's add another battery to up the current to the coils. <laughs> Hell yeah, this is fantastic. <laughs> It's so simple, but even just random tapping sounds lovely. And it's definitely a little louder using the third battery. But we'll up it to five batteries just to make sure we get a good solid ring from the notes. With five batteries, we also now have enough current to play several notes at once. Okay. I'm going to try and play somewhere over the rainbow with this thing. But two things to start with. Number one, I'm definitely not a musician. I don't know what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to try and wing it. And number two, I'm not even sure there are enough notes in that thing to play this song correctly. So we're just going to have to see what this sounds like. But fair warning, it's probably going to sound pretty bad coming from me. Okay. In my opinion, this thing sounds just beautiful. Though you'll notice how obvious it is that I don't have the full set of notes that I need for this song. Clearly my lack of musical knowledge is a limiting factor here. Though I'm confident my buddy who has some actual musical talent here can play this better than I can. So let me know in the comments what songs you'd like to try on it next. And perhaps in the future we'll have to build another bigger one with a load more notes. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> 